There's a church not far from where I live that has a sign out front that for the last few weeks has read this. It says, God is humble, are we? Well, keep in mind that this is a Christian church. Now, to me, looking inside from a non-religious, atheistic perspective, I have to tell you, uh, the Christian God seems to be many things, many of them things that you would not want your God to be, it seems to me. But one of the things I would say inarguably he isn't is humble. Not only is God not humble, but neither are we. We meaning Christians, so not really we, but more like we. I'm not a member of the, the we, but... And it's very easy to demonstrate both of these claims of mine. Uh, for the first one, that, that the Christian God is not humble, all you need is uh, a little book called the Bible. Uh, they're relatively easy to find. I actually stole this one from a church. Uh, not the same church that the sign is for. But turn to almost any random passage in the Old Testament and you'll find the Old Testament God doing something or saying something that is definitely not humble. But the easiest way to point this out, and uh, in a way that is easy to check for those of you who want to follow along at home, is just to turn to Exodus chapter 20 and uh, take a look at the first reading of the Ten Commandments. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's commandment number one. There are only ten, by the way. Moving on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Next, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That's commandment number three. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That's the fourth commandment. The fifth commandment is, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's the fifth commandment out of ten, and it's the first one that is not explicitly and exclusively about requiring God's followers, the people of Israel, to kiss his ass or bow down to him or demonstrate their loyalty or their subservience. These are not the rules of a humble God, all right? He gives them ten commandments, which have been viewed ever since this book became the most widely read sacred text in the Western world, have been viewed as the foundation for law and morality and civil conduct by a lot of people. And four of the ten, forty percent of the Ten Commandments are all about kissing God's ass and reinforcing his greatness and bowing down to him and prostrating ourselves before his magnificence. And even the Fifth Commandment, which ostensibly is about honoring thy father and thy mother, includes a reinforcement of God's superiority. Look how it's worded. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Can't just say, be nice to your mom and dad. It has to reiterate that the land that you live on is only yours because God has seen it in his infinite mercy and love to give it to you. So actually, 
The sixth commandment, which is thou shalt not kill, is the first commandment of the ten to make absolutely no reference whatsoever to the to reinforcing the greatness of God. So I could even argue that half of the Ten Commandments, as worded in Exodus 20 of the King James Version anyway, uh, pertain more to reinforcing God's superiority than to giving us any sort of rules that might be actually helpful in a moral or ethical or civil sense. So the, these are not the rules of a humble God. The Christian God especially the Christian God, of all the gods and all the religions, be they monotheism or polytheism, what have you, the Christ, Judeo-Christian God may be the least humble God that we have ever come up with. He's an incredibly vain, jealous by his own words, God. So the first part of the sign is patently false. By their own rules, by their own text, the Christian God is not humble. And Neither are Christians. Why do I say that? Because Christians believe, at least most Christians, I would say, and nearly all Christians in the area that I happen to live in, uh, Western Maryland in the United States, believe that this world, and indeed the grand universe that has been revealed to us by science, not by religion, not by God, uh, is all here for our benefit, was created by the God that they worship for us not for the other creatures that live on this planet, not for, hypothetically speaking, the other species of life that may exist somewhere else in the universe. Strictly for us. This is all for us. This is all for our benefit. Uh, and through us, for God's benefit, because our only real purpose here is to serve Him. That, that's not humble. Christianity is not humble. Uh, people like to say that Jesus was humble, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Uh, but if you look at what Jesus actually says in the Bible, he's not a very humble guy either. Jesus claimed that he was the one and only begotten Son of God, and that he was the only way anybody could get into heaven. This is the definition of a megalomaniacal claim. This is not a humble man. Now, we can argue over the ethics of Jesus, over whether his teachings were moral or not. Thomas Jefferson certainly seemed to believe that Jesus' teachings were ultimately great examples of, of morality and ethics that should be copied, although he rejected the supernatural claims. But Jesus was not a humble guy, and neither are most of the people who claim to follow him. Christians are not humble people. Christians believe that they have figured it all out, that their religion is the true faith, that they're going to get to go to heaven and bathe in splendor forever because they got it right. And anyone who disagrees with them, be they a Muslim, be they a Jewish person, be they a Hindu, or worst of all, be they an atheist like yours truly, we're all going to suffer for our non-Christianity. This is not a humble philosophy. This is a philosophy that reinforces arrogance, that reinforces conceit after conceit after conceit, that the, that the earth was put here for us, that the universe around the earth was put here for us, that the laws of physics by which this universe operates, like a gigantic clock, were put into motion by the God that created us. It's not a humble philosophy at all. I'll tell you what is humble, though. Science is humble. Science is humble because science has not only shown us a universe far vaster and more wondrous than anything any religious myth has ever offered us, but science is also humble enough to admit that it doesn't know everything, that it probably never will know everything. And when science makes a mistake and finds that mistake out, it corrects itself. Science is self-correcting. Religion is not self-correcting. Religion resists any kind of correction. Not only is science itself humble, but by its very nature, science and its discoveries humble us if we take the time to learn about those discoveries, if we take the time to learn about the universe, about the world, just our planet Earth. 
that science has revealed to us in its true nature, in its true factual reality. It humbles us. It forces us to take humanity from this central position in the universe and put it off to the side where it belongs. Not because there's anything inferior about humans, but because there's nothing superior about us. Science tells us that we are not the center of the universe. We're not even the center of our own galaxy. We're not even the center of our own solar system. We are a very fortunate species among millions of other species who happen to exist on a perfect little planet, perfect for us, almost perfect for us, orbiting a rather average star and a rather average solar system, it turns out, in a far-flung corner of one particular arm out of several of a pretty typical spiral galaxy. Now, to us, this planet means everything, and it ought to. But science tells us that to the universe, it means almost nothing. And that's a humble thought. That's a humble thought because it's hard to swallow. It's hard to take. Humility is difficult to reckon with sometimes. And science forces us to reckon with that humility. If we want our beliefs to reflect reality and not just wishful thinking, we need to accept the fact that from a cosmic perspective, there's nothing special about us. And that's a level of humility that you will never get from a man-made religion, especially Christianity. Christianity is not a humble faith. Christians, by and large, are not a humble people. And that's not to say they're bad people at all. Some of the finest people I know are Christians. But Christianity is not a humble faith, and it doesn't encourage humility. And why should it? The God that it worships is definitely not a humble God.